start. Welcome back. So the next speaker is Evgeny Pomenik from St. Petersburg State University. And he is going to talk on minimal ideal triangulations with two and three edges. So, thank you very much for the introduction. Are you hearing me? Yeah. Okay, thank you. And thanks organizers for invitation to give a talk here. Uh, in my talk, I will speak about uh, compact connected three dimensional manifolds with an empty boundary. And then, problem I will discuss uh, how to find uh, a minimal idea, ideal triangulation uh, of uh, such manifolds. This problem is very similar to uh, the problem of crossing number in a knot theory. Uh, uh, there, are, there are some results in knot theory about crossing number, and there are a few results in uh, three manifold topology. And I'll just speak about uh, very specific results uh, about three manifolds with boundary. Okay, let me start with some uh, definition. We consider uh, ideal tetrahedron, that it is a tetrahedron with uh, its vertices removed. And uh, Ideal triangulation of manifold with boundary is a realization of the interior of manifold as a gluing of some ideal tetrahedra induced by a, by a simplicial, simplicial pairing of the faces. I should note here that we consider not a uh, regular ideal triangulation, but singular, it means that it allows to glue together the faces of the same tetrahedra or just uh, Face uh, to group uh, pair of faces of different tetrahedra. So, uh, very uh, famous example we know that the complement of uh, figure eight node, consider it as a compact manifold with a boundary torus, uh, and his minimal ideal triangulation consists of uh, two tetrahedra. So, uh, an ideal triangulation is minimal if there are no ideal triangulation of this manifold with pure uh, tetrahedra. And uh, we will uh, call the, uh, the complexity uh, of the manifold uh, triangulation complexity is just the minimal number of uh, minimal number of ideal tetrahedra in its uh, minimal triangulation and denote it by C delta. Okay. Uh, as I already said, it's a difficult problem to find the, the triangulation complexity for a given three manifold. Indeed, uh, uh, we can easily, can almost easily construct an ideal triangulation for given a manifold using uh, different approaches uh, like uh, the uh, Heger diagram or, or other things. And uh, the problem how to prove that this ideal triangulation is minimal. And the first approach is to use a computer and just enumerate all uh, the triangulations consisting of one tetrahedron, two tetrahedron, and so on. And uh, about manifold with boundary. What we know about the manifold with boundary, we have uh, a census of hyperbolic three manifolds with totally geodesic boundary. Why hyperbolic? Because it's a more interesting class of manifolds among three dimensional manifolds. So uh, in 1990, Fuji uh, proved that there is only eight manifolds uh, which you can glue from. Uh, to ideal tetrahedra. And uh, I mean, this case is just consider, uh, he considered only ori oriented manifolds, and uh, there are no oriented manifolds to which we can construct from one ideal tetrahedra. And uh, we can say that uh, all these eight manifolds have uh, the same volume and uh, this volume is minimal among all hyperbolic manifolds, among volumes of all hyperbolic manifolds is totally geodesic boundary. Okay, 
And the next step was done by uh, Frigerio, Martelli, and Petronio in 2004. They uh, enumerated uh, and proved that uh, all of these manifolds are different. Uh, they proved that there are 150 uh, hyperbolic manifolds of complexity three, and there are 5,002 manifolds of complexity four. So uh, we should say that we have many uh, manifolds for which we know the value of the triangulation complexity, but uh, only the finite number of them. What about uh, infinite number of manifolds? Okay, I will speak about uh, approach uh, to this problem, uh, which based on few uh, very simple uh, ideas. The first, the first idea is that uh, if you consider any uh, arbitrary ideal triangulation of manifold, then uh, the Euler characteristic of uh, our manifold is just the difference between the number of edges uh, and the number of tetrahedra in this uh, ideal triangulation. So uh, what this formula gives us? Uh, the first idea is that uh, we can see that if our triangulation is, is minimal in the sense of uh, number of two, uh, number of tetrahedra, then is, it is minimal in the sense of uh, number of edges. So instead of proving uh, the minimality of tetrahedra, we can prove the minimality of uh, edges. The second uh, uh, important point is that if we uh, enumerate uh, all manifolds of this uh, fixed number of tetrahedra, we have only uh, finite possibilities, to, uh, for finite manifolds of given uh, constructors from given number of tetrahedra. But if you consider uh, manifolds that have triangulations with a given number of edges, uh, you can construct infinitely many such triangulations, such manifolds. Uh, so, okay. And the very natural idea to consider manifolds that has uh, that have triangulations is exactly one edge, uh, which uh, immediately implies that this uh, ideal triangulation is minimal. And uh, such uh, triangulations were considered by Frigerio, Martelli, and Petronio. Uh, first of all, they proved that uh, if you have a manifold with such triangulation, then this manifold is hyperbolic with uh, total geodesic boundary. Uh, and they constructed infinitely many such triangulations. I will show you uh, a little bit later uh, an example of these um, triangulations. Okay. Uh, the native uh, idea to consider uh, triangulations with uh, uh, two and three edges and uh, find the minimal among them. Okay, uh, the next step, step uh, was done in 2016 by Therese and myself. And uh, we proved that if we have uh, an ideal triangulation of some manifold, uh, which consists of two edges, uh, and uh, this triangulation doesn't admit that three two partner move, uh, then this triangulation is minimal. And uh, you can see here uh, what is two three and uh, three two partner move. Uh, okay, if you have uh, two tetrahedra with common phase, then you can uh, remove this common phase and uh, divide this, uh, this union into three tetrahedra, just uh, add a new edge from the north pole to the south pole. Okay, and uh, so it is obvious if our triangulation uh, admit the three, three two partner moves, then we can apply this uh, partner move and reduce the number of 
edges to from two to one. And of course, we use the number of tetrahedra from uh, n to n minus one. So we get a minimal uh, triangulation of this manifold. And just to uh, uh, remark, uh, it is known that any two ideal triangulation of uh, given manifold is boundary, compact manifold is boundary, can be uh, connected by the sequence of uh, Two, three, and three, two partner moves. Okay. Uh, let me give an example uh, of manifolds uh, such uh, uh, manifolds which satisfy the previous theory. Okay. Uh, this is so called Pauli Zimmerman manifold. And they were constructed in 1996. And uh, how to construct them? We can see the uh, by pyramid, uh, just uh, given by, described by two parameters, uh, N and K, with such restrictions. Uh, okay. And we uh, demand that the great common division of uh, n and two minus k is equal to one. Okay, then uh, we uh, identify the faces of uh, this bi-pyramid um, by the rule for each, for every i, we take a face a i, a i plus one and s plus, and glue it with the face uh, as minus a i plus k, a i plus k plus one. So I show it on the picture here. And of course, uh, indices are taken mod m and the vertices are glued together in the order in which they are written in these gluings. That a i uh, identified with s minus and so on. Okay. What we get after uh, such a gluing? Uh, we get a so uh, called uh, singular manifold with uh, one singular point, which is uh, whose neighborhood is just a cone over uh, a surface of uh, big genus, not a, not a cone over, not a ball. And uh, just uh, remark that all the edges of uh, this bipyramid. Uh, are identified with each other because of this uh, restriction about great common division of, of the numbers. And all the vertices are identified to form the uh, unique vertice. So this unique vertice is the uh, singular point of this Cielda manifold. And uh, since we're interested in, in manifolds with boundary and in ideal triangulation, we can easily uh, remove uh, a small uh, cut, a small neighborhood of the of this uh, vertex and get a compact manifold with uh, boundary, and just remove this vertex and get uh, an ideal triangulation of this manifold, just uh, which consists of tetrahedra of such type, like on the first uh, right picture. Okay, uh, okay. and uh, uh, Paulut Simerman proved that all these manifolds are hyperbolic with totally geodesic boundary, and moreover, uh, they are homeomorphic uh, if and only if, okay, uh, M and K, is an analogic to and and try to prime if and only if uh, n equals and prime and k equals k prime. And uh, these uh, triangulations has exactly three uh, two edges. Uh, one edge is external, all uh, edges of y pyramid go to exactly one edge. The second edge is uh, edge is internal this this edge. So this is exactly uh, 
an example uh, which satisfies the previous theorem when we say it's about uh, triangulations is uh, uh, two edges. But uh, the minimality of such triangulation was proved to uh, a few years before uh, that theorem by Andre Wisnin and me. Okay. Uh, so we completely understood the situation when uh, our triangulation, uh, if our triangulation has exactly two edges, we know when it is minimal or not. Uh, or not. Uh, to describe the case uh, of ideal triangulations with three edges and give you uh, ideas how to prove the theorems, I need to switch uh, from the viewpoint of ideal triangulation to the dual language uh, of uh, standard algebra. So uh, if you consider this picture, you can see uh, a standard dual polyhedron, uh, two-dimensional polyhedron to a hexahedron. Uh, you can define it as a union of uh, links of uh, vertices of this uh, hexahedron, but it infers by centric subdivision. So we have. Uh, in each tetrahedron, we have such a dual polyhedron, but if we consider uh, such polyhedron in each uh, tetrahedron of the ideal triangulation, we get uh, some uh, two dimensional polyhedron. And let me describe uh, this polyhedron more carefully. First of all, I should know that uh, there are three types of points uh, in such a polyhedron. Non-singular point for neighborhood just to this uh, triple point uh, whose neighborhood like in the second picture and the two vertex uh, whose neighborhood uh, like this. And uh, if we look at the right, uh, on the left picture, we see a bold black uh, small ball in, in the center, which is a exactly two vertices, and we have uh, bold uh, black edges, which are triple lines, and the other points are non simple points. And moreover, uh, these uh, three types of points give us a cell decomposition of uh, these two dimensional polyhedron. Uh, non singular points form disks, uh, triple lines form uh, edges, and two vertices is just the uh, vertices. And we can say that uh, our poly dual polyhedron has a very nice structure. We, we take, uh, we have a very real uh, graph of the DPD4, and we glue to this graph uh, some disks. So, uh, Okay, this is a complete uh, description of this dual polyhedron. And the last maybe things about this, uh, that this poly dual polyhedron uh, has a homotopy type of uh, initial manifold uh, whose ideal triangulation we take to, to start to construct this uh, dual polyhedron. Okay. Uh, let me give uh, an example. Uh, okay. Uh, I forgot to say what is about. Okay. Our polyhedron, which is dual to uh, the ideal triangulation, is called the standard polyhedron. And uh, we can consider of sub polyhedra of this, uh, which we'll call simple sub polyhedron, and the definition of them that. Uh, that the sub polyhedron is simple if every point has one of uh, the these three uh, possible uh, neighborhoods non singular point, triple line, and two vertices. For example, 
if you consider just the torus, this is a simple polyhedron ball, not, not a standard. If you add uh, a disk along the meridian, uh, we again get a simple polyhedron, uh, not, a, not a standard. But uh, if you add uh, a disk along the longitude, uh, already we get uh, standard polyhedron with one two vertices here and there is uh, two triple lines with two edges, just uh, the rest of meridian and longitude. And we have uh, three disks, uh, three disks, okay. And uh, for this uh, standard polyhedron, we can consider uh, a simple polyhedra uh, in it just this is a simple sub simple subpolyhedron. This is simple subpolyhedron of this uh, standard polyhedron on the right. So, okay, how it help us to prove the minimality of uh, um, minimality of ideal triangulations and also how to draw uh, ideal triangulations. First of all, how to draw ideal triangulations? It's uh, easy to draw uh, its dual, dual standard polyhedron, like in this picture. Uh, what is uh, drawing here? Uh, if you consider a graph which consists of uh, double edges, double edges, and uh, Two loops and and to add to this graph some disks as I described it before. Uh, we can uh, describe in such a manner a standard polyhedron. So uh, here you can see a standard polyhedra with uh, one disks. So we, we, if you consider this, uh, if you go from along this curve is just show us how to glue a disk to, to this graph. Okay, and uh, if you go along this curve, you can see that we have only ex uh, exactly one uh, curve. So we uh, attach to this graph exactly one disk, uh, which says that uh, because of duality, uh, each disk, uh, is one to one corresponds to edges of our triangulation. So we have a triangulation with one edge. And uh, some more details about synthesis of polyhedra. Uh, just uh, the first picture just re reminds the structure of a simple sub polyhedra. And the second picture show that uh, if you uh, color uh, point of simple subpolyhedra uh, in red color, we can see that near a two vertex uh, uh, configuration of simple subpolyhedra is just one of uh, four, possi uh, four possibilities uh, like on this picture. I can uh, describe uh, if you are not familiar with uh, simple and standard polyhedra, I can define what is the simple uh, subpolyhedron of uh, triangulation. Uh, we are coloring of uh, edges, like we do in uh, definition of prior theorem invariant. Okay, if we color each edge of our ideal triangulation either zero, either one. And uh, we uh, just want that there are no faces, uh, forbidden faces is just like this, uh, zero, zero, one. If we have no such faces, then uh, this coloring uh, define exactly a simple sub polyhedron of uh, our standard dual standard polyhedron triangulation. Okay. Uh, 
And the last things before we can state some theorems about uh, minimality of ideal triangulations with uh, three edges, we need to, uh, more, to have more information about simple sub algebra uh, of uh, dual polyhedra to, to, to such triangulations. Okay. Okay, we start with uh, ideal triangulations uh, tau, uh, tau an ideal triangulation with three edges exactly, and uh, P it's dual standard polyhedron. And we want to describe uh, the possibilities for uh, simply sub polyhedra of P. And uh, to describe a simple sub polyhedra, uh, as I showed before, uh, we need to specify which disks we take to uh, disk we take to to form this polyhedron, and uh, there are not many uh, possibilities to take a disk. If you have three disk, I you know the disk alpha, beta, and gamma, and uh, there are only eight possibilities and uh, okay by f of t i denote the set of all simple sub of t and we have the eight possibilities the first uh, zero possibility uh, i would say y zero uh, we have only empty and p empty set and p and uh, I will, uh, the numeration follows the number of uh, proper simple sum polyhedra uh, of P. In this situation, zero, we have no uh, proper simple sum polyhedra. Okay, the case one, we have uh, one proper simple sum polyhedra, which forms by only one uh, disk or just two disks. And so on, we have uh, the second, the, the third case, we have two. Proper simple sub polyhedra, which forms uh, on like this one or like this one, and so on. Uh, okay. Finally, we have a situation, and uh, later I will prove, uh, I will uh, state theorem and maybe uh, prove it uh, if I will have a time uh, for these cases. This one. Uh, this one and this one. Okay. The first theorem says that uh, if you have an ideal triangulation, uh, these exactly three edges uh, and uh, its dual standard polyhedron has only two uh, simple sub polyhedra the empty set and uh, P themselves, then uh, this triangulation is minimal. Okay, uh, I will not prove this theorem right now. Uh, and okay, the second case, if this, uh, this uh, result due to uh, Katerina Shumakova and myself and was published in the last year, and the second uh, case, uh, if we have a triangulation with exactly three edges and the set of simply supported like this, we have uh, three proper uh, supported each formed by uh, two disks. Then uh, triangulation is uh, minimal. And let me, uh, this uh, result of Malibin, uh, Andrei Malibin, Kirina Shonakova and myself, and let me prove uh, and let me describe this triangulation as this uh, manifolds uh, more detailed. Uh, okay, how to prove this theorem? The proof is very easy. Uh, first of all, uh, it's not hard to prove that all this, uh, all of these proper simple sub uh, are surfaces. Uh, and then, uh, we can consider a uh, second homology group of manifold dispersions in Z2, which is equals to the uh, second homology group of uh, dual polyhedron because they 
have uh, the same comment every time. So this is the same as H2 is the two. And uh, for every uh, triangulation for uh, every dual polyhedron, we have the same equality. And the uh, last idea that each element of this homology group can be uh, realized by a closed surfaces in our dual polyhedron. So in uh, our polyhedron P, we have exactly uh, four surfaces, uh, just n surfaces, uh, surfaces two, and so the, our group is Z2 plus Z2. But uh, if our triangulation is not minimal, it should uh, have uh, one or two edges. But in this case, uh, f of uh, this, the number of simple cephalohedra are not greater than one in case of uh, two disks, two edges and two disks. So, uh, but uh, uh, having only one simple cephalohedra, you can get only uh, the group uh, G2. So, we prove that this triangulation is mean. Okay. Uh, and I can describe uh, how to construct such triangulation. It's a very beautiful construction. Okay. Uh, how to construct? I will describe a, a dual standard polyhedron uh, and then you know how to convert it to an ideal triangulation. We need to reconsider uh, uh, Regular covalent graphs. This in this case. And uh, in this, in such graphs, we consider uh, Euler run cycles. And what we need, we need uh, uh, three Euler run cycles in such a graph, such that uh, each pair is uh, compa compatible. What what I mean by compatibility. Uh, it means that for each vertex, let me draw just the vertex of the graph. Our cycles, our three cycles have a different, uh, different, they pass different in a different way from this vertex. For example, the first order Cycles go like this. The second uh, goes like this, and the third one goes like this. So for each vertex of a graph, we oh, okay. We 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 have three Euler cycles, and for each vertex, uh, they have a different picture for each vertex. Uh, for example, uh, this polyhedron. Uh, this graph has exactly uh, three compatible Euler-Ron cycles. And then uh, if we have such a graph is all around three euler cycles, uh, then we can attach uh, along each uh, cycle a disk. And we get a standard polyhedron. And uh, this standard polyhedron uh, gives us uh, an idea of triangulation, which Satisfy uh, this theorem. Uh, okay. And what we know uh, about the manifold I constructed before, we can prove that uh, these manifolds are hyperbolic with totally geodesic connected boundary. Uh, and then I can easily describe how to construct. Uh, in, uh, infinity many example of such graphs you can just if you just take two graphs uh, each of them with uh, three earlier cycles and in each graph we have uh, we take an edge 
then we can uh, replace it with uh, such a graph. which uh, will have uh, three compatible error on cycles. So we can construct anything to many such graph, anything to many such manifold for whose triangulations we know them minimally. And uh, moreover, we can prove that uh, if we have uh, two graphs uh, with uh, n and n prime vertices and these uh, framing which is elegant cycles theta and theta prime, then uh, manifolds uh, are high memory even on the if the framing graphs are isomorphic. Okay. So, uh, in the very recent work of my student, uh, Anton Repkov and myself uh, it's not written yet but a very interesting result uh, it says that uh, if you prove uh, if you have an ideal triangulation with exactly three edges and PBA do polyhedron on this triangulation as a set of uh, simply sub polyhedral of the uh, contains exactly one proper synthesis of polyhedron Q. And the number of true vertices in Q, uh, so the vertices of such a types uh, that uh, near vertex, uh, near idea, uh, true vertex of P, uh, we, we see only the points of, uh, of Q. So, mm, less than uh, number of two vertex in P minus four, then this uh, ideal triangulation is minimal. Okay, uh, let me just show that 10 years ago, uh, we already constructed such manifolds with Andre Wisnin and prove uh, the minimality of their ideal triangulations. Uh, it was just generalization of Paulitzi Zimmerman uh, manifolds. We just have the same uh, bipyramid with the same gluing of the faces, but we uh, change the, that the common grade division of this number is two. It means that the, uh, external edges of bipyramid into two edges. And then uh, we prove that uh, these ideal triangulations are minimal and the uh, manifolds are hyperbolic with totally geodesic bonded. The same uh, as was proved for natural power similar manifold. Okay. Uh, let me give an idea how to prove uh, the theorem that um, idea really interesting. Okay, uh, to prove the theorem, we use so-called epsilon variant of Matvei Kovchinnikov and Sokolov, which is just the invariant of triphenotype. Okay, how to define it? Uh, for each uh, simple polyhedral of our dual polyhedron P, we uh, consider its epsilon weight, which is given uh, by formula minus one to the power uh, B of Q, where V of Q is the number of two vertices of Q. And uh, epsilon to the power all of our of Q, Q minus uh, number of two vertices of Q. So uh, where Epsilon is just uh, a solution of equation epsilon to the power two equals epsilon plus one, uh, very famous number. And uh, uh, I need to remark that uh, our invariant 
is just uh, a sum of uh, weights of all simples of polyhedral or uh, dual polyhedral. And uh, the last remark on this slide that when we consider the power of epsilon uh, according to this beautiful formula, we can see that this is uh, fk times epsilon plus fk minus one, where fk is extended Fibonacci number. By extended, I mean that uh, we can consider uh, negative uh, indexes k from, from z. So we have this is a Fibonacci numbers. And uh, uh, this situation that uh, epsilon variant connected with Fibonacci number gives us a very nice construction how to prove the theory. Okay, uh, how to prove? We start with our uh, ideal triangulation. Uh, suppose that it uh, consists of exactly n tetrahedra and denote by p its dual sub polyhedron. Uh, then uh, by duality, it has n true vertices and exactly p disks because edges uh, correspond to disks of p. And the way, on the contrary, we suppose that uh, our triangulation is not minimal. Then uh, there are two cases. The, uh, we have two cases. The first case is that I minimal ideal triangulation uh, consists of exactly uh, I minus N minus two tetrahedra and uh, one H. This is the first situation. And the second situation, uh, we have N minus one tetrahedra and exactly two H. So uh, let us consider two, uh, let us consider uh, standard polyhedron, which is dual to uh, this minimal ideal triangulation. Then for this P prime, we have three situations. The first situation uh, when we have uh, N minus two, two vertices and uh, one disks like here. And uh, for the set of simple subpolyhedra, we have only uh, one possibility. But uh, for the second case, we have two possibilities for uh, two possibilities for the set of simple subpolyhedra. Uh, we, uh, we we either have a proper simple subpolyhedra, uh, which I denote by R, or we do not have such a polyhedra. Okay. And then we uh, just calculate epsilon variant using these two, because we uh, these uh, two triangulations, this polyhedra P and P prime, uh, correspond to the same manifold. So we can calculate uh, the epsilon variant by these two polyhedra, and they should be equals. So uh, this is this uh, formula for epsilon variant calculated by P. It has n vertices and all the characteristics is uh, p is three minus n, but uh, we do not. Uh, the unknown value is just what is about uh, all the characteristic of q and the uh, number of two vertices. Of q. We do know this information, and if we uh, consider the more difficult case, uh, we should consider the case uh, separately. But if we consider more difficult case when uh, Polyhedron P prime has three simple sub polyhedra. In this case, uh, the value of epsilon variant is uh, like this. Okay. And then we should uh, write an equality. Uh, this one equals to this one. And we have uh, this formula. And uh, we have a big problem. Uh, have many uh, unknown values uh, concerning uh, the polyhedra Q and R. But the Fibonacci numbers help us to solve this problem. How to do that? Uh, first of all, uh, we can remove this someone from the right to the left and uh, 
using a Fibonacci formula, we get this one instead of epsilon to the power of three minus two n and epsilon to the power of four minus two n. And then uh, we can replace this equality just by a uh, system of two equalities uh, since uh, epsilon to the power k is equal to uh, the polynomial for power one from epsilon. So, uh, and the last step here is use so-called second of theorem, uh, which says that uh, each natural number n can be represented in a unique way as a sum of distinct Fibonacci number. Uh, here I mean Fibonacci number with uh, positive uh, coefficients. Uh, and in this presentation, no two consecutive Fibonacci numbers are used. So uh, let us come back and uh, what is I don't like here. I don't like here that uh, in second of theorem, I uh, can, can use Fibonacci number, but here extended Fibonacci number because of these indexes. And, uh, but we have a system and we can add to the first uh, equation of this system, the second one, and get, and then we get uh, minus one, to the power n of uh, six uh, minus two n plus and so on. And indexes here will be at q minus e at q plus one and so on. So uh, using this idea, we can uh, get that all the indexes of these equations will be positive. And then we can consider, uh, we can apply second of, second of theorem, just uh, analyzing that uh, what cases we can have. For example, we can have only such type of cases, uh, F, I consider, uh, I consider different cases with respect to the signs before my Fibonacci numbers. Here I have uh, here of Q minus B of Q equals F uh, of R minus B of R. And the different uh, permutation of these Fibonacci numbers. But for example, this should give us, uh, this second of theorems give us that, uh, we have either Q of Q minus V of Q equals uh, six minus two N and Q of R minus V of R equals uh, seven minus two N minus two N or this is uh, four minus two N or this is uh, six minus two N. For there are finite number of situation we can allow, uh, analyze and get some very beautiful equation. And the second one that for simple subpolyhedra we can uh, write in lower bound for its all characteristics. This is just one minus the number of two vertices in, uh, in our dual polyhedra. So this give us, uh, lower bound for the number of two vertices like, uh, for example, uh, n minus three. So uh, what we have, we get that if our triangulation is not minimal, then the number of uh, two vertices in this uh, dual poly, uh, in polyhedron group uh, should be uh, greater or equal n minus one, n minus two, n minus three, and so on. The, that is, um, let us look at the formulation of the theorem. So here we have 
we can prove it for n minus four, where n is a number of adverbs. Oh, okay. So I think that I should finish here. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you for your talk. So are there questions? Anyone has any comments or questions? I just wanted to ask one question when you were defining this uh, invariant epsilon invariant uh -huh. about like <coughs> so uh, how do you show that it's an invariant like what in what sense it's an invariant for the three manifold uh okay uh we know that any two triangulations of the same ideal triangulation of the same manifold can be uh connected by uh two three and three two uh partner move if we draw uh, the move for dual polyhedron, it's called matveev kirgalini move for standard polyhedron. So uh, we need to prove only that under this matveev kirgalini move, uh, the, this invariant is invariant, exactly. And it's uh, very simple. It's written in Matveev's uh, book. Mm -hmm. Can one use it to define a knot invariant? Like one could take the complement of the knot and compute this for that three manifold and- Of course, it, uh, uh, if, uh, since uh, uh, knot complement is invariant of knot, so this invariant is invariant of- Knot, yeah. So knot. is it being used anywhere like knot theory? Uh, I never met it. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, that's sort of like uh, meaning, is it been uh, successful in detecting something which was not detected earlier, like amongst knots? Maybe I, I don't know, maybe so. Uh, yeah, I was just curious. So does anyone else have any questions? Otherwise, we must thank the speaker.